Hey GED students, I had a student who commented on one of my videos on YouTube confused. He's like, you know, how come sometimes when we divide the answer is a fraction that just doesn't make any sense to me? Why would that even happen? And so I thought it was just such a great question that a lot of people struggle with because we don't really understand fractions. Um, so I thought I'd deal with it. So here's what, and this is what you should put in your notes if you're taking notes. Here's what most students don't understand. You guys, you never graduate past an elementary school understanding of fractions to think of it another way. So here's a high school understanding of fractions you need to understand. A fraction is quite simply an act of division. Like literally, three over four literally means three divided by four. In fact, if you've ever seen a divided by symbol, looks a lot like a fraction, doesn't it? Three divided by four. <laughs> three divided by four can also be written as three divided by four. Same thing. Oh, there we go. Same thing. So uh, that being said, let's look at how this comes up in algebra and then talk about the results here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw some diagrams to truly understand why this works the way it does. So let's er erase my messiness and get started here. So first thing I want to look at is an example where I wouldn't get a fractional answer. Let me show you what I mean. So uh, 4x is equal to 8. Well, if I wanted to solve this, work to get the letter alone, figure out what x would have to be in this scenario, um, I would, of course, do the opposite of multiplying. Uh, the 4 and the x are shoved together right now, so they're multiplying. So I would divide by 4. And you're going to see how a mathematician writes that. We never use the divide by symbol once we hit algebra. And there's a real reason for that. It's not just because we're jerks and we like different symbols. It's because this divide by symbol is not very powerful. It does tell you to divide, but it doesn't tell you exactly what to divide by when we get to multi-step problems. And that's a really tricky thing. That's why you see a ton of different memes on the internet that involve dividing where people can't agree on the answers because it's not clear exactly what you're dividing by. But if you use a fraction bar, you know exactly what to divide by. Anything underneath the fraction bar is what we're dividing by. So I'm dividing by four. Okay, so now I'm gonna do whatever I want to an equation as long as I do it to both sides. So make sure you hop across to the right-hand side and put divide by four over there too. And now let's think about what happens. Of course, on this side, multiplying and dividing by four cancel, so x is alone just like I wanted. And now on this side, this literally says take eight things and divide it into four equal sized groups. Divide it into four equal sized groups. Okay, I can do that. One, two, three, four. How many things do we end up with in each group? Two. And so in this case, eight divided by four, you know, gives, gives us a whole number answer. It gives us two. Okay, but this doesn't always happen. This isn't always the case. Sometimes when we're dividing, we, we don't end up with whole things. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so next example, 4x equals 3. 4x equals 3. Ooh. Again, I would isolate x the same way. I need to get rid of any multipliers by doing the opposite, by dividing. And of course, I can do whatever I want to an equation as long as I do it to both sides. So I jump across and do that there. And at first, it seems like this is going exactly like the last problem. You know, multiplying and dividing by 4 are opposites. They cancel x's alone. But now I get a little stumped. 3 doesn't divide nicely into, you know, four equal groups. It just straight up doesn't. And so a lot of students would tell me, well, this is impossible. You can't take 3 and divide by 4. Well, I disagree. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to take three things. So let's pretend I have three candy bars to share, you guys. This is a picture of what I'm doing when I take 3 and I divide it by 4, okay? Now, Obviously, if I have four friends, I have four friends, we want to share this candy equally, we're going to have to break some bars up. And the easy way is, the easiest way to do that is to break it into fourths. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, and don't worry, you don't have to do this with a picture. I just want to give you visual evidence of why this works. So I'm going to break each one of these candy bars into four pieces so that I can share it equally uh, between my friends. So like maybe, you know, I get this one, this one, and this one. I get three of those pieces. And my second friend, Tony, gets this one, this one, and this one. He gets three of those pieces. 
and Jack gets this one, this one, and this one, he gets three of those pieces. And Fatima gets this one, this one, and this one. She gets three of those pieces. So each one of us gets three pieces. Three pieces of what size? Well, remember what I broke the candy bars into? I broke them into fourths. Three fourths. Each one of us gets three of out of four of a candy bar. So each one of us gets three fourths. And that's how dividing can be represented using fractions. It's basically when a mathematician is too lazy to do it with decimals. We don't want to do three divided by four with decimals. It's so disgusting. We'd rather just leave it as a fraction. What is three divided by four? Well, it's three fourths. All right. Now we're going to look at a similar one uh, that just has a little uh, tweak on top of that, that it gives us a uh, improper fraction that students usually hate. So let's look at the ne next example. 4x is equal to 5. Once again, if I wanted to solve this, get x alone, I'd have to get rid of that multiplier of 4 by doing the opposite, dividing by 4. And once again, I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides of an equation. And let's see what we would get here. Now, multiplying and dividing by four opposites, they cancel, I get x. And then if you have five things, five things, we'll have five candy bars this time. And do you want to break it into, you know, four equal groups? Well, it's not going to, it's not going to work out for you again. Um, if you don't start chopping the candy bars up, you got to chop them up. And so once again, the easiest way to do it would be to break one, each one into four pieces. Uh, and then if you do that and you want to break it into fourths, well, you know, one for me, one for her, one for, we're going to break it into four equal groups. And each one of us is going to end up with one of the pieces from these five bars. And so we're going to end up with a total of one, two, three, four, five, five fourths, five pieces of candy bar. And those pieces are size quarter, five quarters of a candy bar. I broke them into quarters. I get five of them. I get five, you know, Fatima gets five, Jack gets five, and whoever the heck the other person name I said gets five. <laughs> yeah, I'm flaky. I'm good at math, but I'm flaky. All right. So the next one I wanted to show you might be saying, gosh, Kate, is beating a dead horse. I get it already. Uh, next one I wanted to show you because it also involves reducing. Let me show you what I mean. All right, so if I have 4x is equal to 2, and again, I want to isolate by getting rid of a multiplier, I'll divide both sides by 4. And this time I end up with x is equal to 2 fourths. Now this is absolutely true, 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 but it isn't done uh, because mathematicians want our answers simplified. And this answer will actually get simpler, unlike the last two. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so this time I only have two candy bars. And I want to split it between four people. So, of course, I can divide it into fourths like I've been doing. Okay. Um, but if I divide it equally, you know, let's see. Let's do this. One for Fatima, one for Jack, one for the other guy I can't remember, and one for me. One for Fatima, one for Jack, one for the other guy I can't remember, and one for me. You're going to see that I end up with, you know, two out of four pieces, two out of four pieces. But that's an interesting thing because when you think about two out of four pieces of a candy bar, so let me draw a candy bar with two out of four equal pieces. Yes, that's two out of four, but it's also half the candy bar, right? I broke the candy bar equally into four pieces. I get two out of four, I get half. So two out of four is the same as one half. So sometimes it's an active division that can get simpler, simpler, like two fourths can simplify to one half, but it's still, you know, a fractional answer. I'm still getting only part of a candy bar. I'm not getting full bars. Okay, so that's how you get a fractional result. If in order to distribute something evenly, you have to break it into pieces. Let me say that again. You get a fractional result if in order to distribute something equally, you have to break it into pieces. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments. I'd love to answer it. I and I just can't even say enough times that I love this question, Leo. Thank you for sending it in. I think you're going to give, give clarity to so many students who struggle with fractions. All right. Happy learning, you guys.